There are too many variables in the problem when we encounter issues with Wayland. Things like software slash applications, Linux distros, desktop environments, Wayland compositors, as well as the computer hardware that you have in your computer. A combination of one or more of these issues will sometimes break your workflow, or at the very minimum, just annoy you. Hi, my name is Julia. I'm a computational physics PhD student studying nanomagnets, and I rely on Linux, code, and soon machine learning to tackle big challenges at the nanoscale. And today we are going to talk about broad categories of issues that many Linux users will eventually or have already encountered when working on Wayland. The divided opinion about Wayland made me wonder why the discussions are so heated sometimes. I have personally experienced and in the comments to my videos and across all over internet. Obviously, if there wouldn't be no problems, people wouldn't fuss about it. And if you happen to ever come across some of the issues that Wayland brings with this, these problems can sometimes even break your workflow that you have worked so hard on for the past couple months or maybe even years, which of course will be very frustrating. And then here comes Wayland as default on your favorite Linux distro that you have got to know and love and suddenly things start to break. And it doesn't matter whether you are a developer, a gamer, or just a regular Linux user or an office worker, it's at the very least annoying. Not to mention the fact that Linux operating systems are very common in the scientific research environment. This is where I'm coming from. And this Linux user group is also quite a significant group out of all possible user groups of Linux operating systems. And again, as a researcher, when your perfect workflow, very efficient and fast, suddenly doesn't work anymore, and you are forced to find solutions that will fix the problem, not to mention the fact that you sometimes don't even know where the problem is coming from, this is not how we as researchers would like to spend our time. We would like to work on things that actually bring us closer to our goal, whatever that might be, instead of troubleshooting and searching for solutions all over internet and make things work again. And so I made an attempt to try and understand the most common problems people encounter when working on Wayland systems. And I searched all over Google, on Reddit, on GitHub, on blog posts and in the comment section. And I think I kind of figured four broader categories where we can group all possible problems that we can encounter on Wayland. So first we will take a look at the broader categories and the specific examples for each category, and then try to think through the possible solutions. Though some of the things I guess we can never answer very definitely, and many questions will remain as rhetorical. And just a quick disclaimer, when I was looking for the information for this video, I found an excellent blog post, which I really liked, and I will link it in the description. And I just wanted to point out that some of the ideas do come from that blog post. And so, of course, I want to give the appropriate credit to the author. So the link to the blog post is in the description. And now let's get to the problem descriptions. So one of the biggest problems is the compatibility on portability issue, specifically for many applications that are not yet ready for working on Wayland, or at least not without issues. So for example, applications like Zoom, Slack, Google Meet, users may encounter black screens and other limited functionality. Another example is the software for scientific plotting and visualization, such as MATLAB and Matplotlib in Python. So whenever there is an interactive window where we want to pan around or zoom into the figure, users may experience problems such as lag, stuttering, or problems with scaling. The second broader category I came up with is graphics and performance issues. I would fit NVIDIA GPUs problems into this category. And historically, we know that NVIDIA and Linux has been at odds. And so therefore, NVIDIA GPUs are really prone to issues with Wayland. So users with NVIDIA hardware often experience glitches when waking from sleep, adjusting display settings, or switching themes, and a whole range of other issues that are GPU related. Yeah, so gamers for sure would 
very likely encounter issues like that, where the games might suddenly suffer from the frame rate drop or stuttering due to the driver's limitations on Wayland. Though I've heard that the latest versions of NVIDIA drivers, I believe it's like 550-ish series, have fixed a lot of problems in that direction, and updating the drivers often only fixes the issues for the newer GPUs. Another example from this category is OBS, or streaming with OBS Studio. Even though they have fixed a lot of issues lately, but some users might experience lag or rendering problems, some of the users may still experience increased latency in streaming and recording, especially in systems with mixed GPUs. Then there also might be issues with the video editing software like DaVinci Resolve or KDN Live when rendering and exporting. Now the third category is functionality limitations and missing features. While Wayland has improved security and privacy, this has created some other issues. These changes restrict certain features by default, such as screen sharing or screen recording. Some of the examples, again, would be OBS Studio and Zoom. And so, as you can see, some of the applications fit into more than one category based on what we look at. Another important feature that many users are annoyed with that is missing now, or at least tricky to set up, is the global keyboard shortcuts. And again, because of that different security model in Wayland, Many single applications don't have a full access to the system-wide input, such as global keyboard shortcuts. So, for example, you want to open a project folder, start a new development environment, and open a browser with your favorite resources. And then you want to create a custom keyboard shortcut to do this all in one go. So, for example, you would want to call this Control shift and s and it might be really tricky to do that if you are working on Wayland. For many of these issues, workarounds are still in development, but the full parity is still lacking. And another common issue people see in this category is remote access. Under Wayland, we need to rely on third-party tools to be able to remotely log in to our machines, be it at work, at home, on the private network, or across the internet to like computers somewhere even far away. Now we finally come to the fourth and last point, and it's about hardware and peripherals compatibility. So if you, for example, have a Wacom tablet or some other external uh, peripheral device that you use to connect to your computer to do work on, you might encounter issues very quickly when using them on Wayland. Now that we have listed most of the possible problems that you can see when working on Wayland, let's briefly touch on the possible solutions. So broadly speaking, I would say that there aren't that many. So one of them would be switching to a different Wayland composer. This sometimes helps. Some of them, like KD, addresses many issues much better than the others. But then this will force you to change from your favorite desktop environment that is using a particular Wayland compositor to something else, which you might not necessarily like. So that's limiting already. But nonetheless, it's still a workaround. Another one will be to use third-party tools and applications to extend the functionality that is missing, like, as I mentioned, remote access through the third-party tools like VNC, RDP, Waypipe, and so on. Some Linux distributions might offer the support for reverting back to X11, and that might get you through a certain period of time and serve as a temporary solution until the support for many important applications or even some niche applications will be there, including the support for a particular hardware. So that's another solution. But I realize there is much more to it because, again, it's a combination of different things that can cause a very specific problem with Wayland, and listing them in one video is really not practical. But at least I hope this gives you a little overview of what problems people face and why there's such a fuss about Wayland in the Linux community. And I don't really know if there's a point even in arguing over whether Wayland is ready for mass adoption or not. You know, people say it all the time that Wayland is not ready. I don't really know if it makes sense to really keep arguing. Yes, we have a problem that many popular Linux distributions like Ubuntu, Fedora, and so on switched to Wayland as a default display server before some of the applications were even ready to be ported over to Wayland. And this causes problems not only for end users, but also for the developers of those applications whose apps are now not really compatible with Wayland. 
And so there is obviously a problem there and I don't know, possible solution might be like really to be able to provide two fully supported versions of the same distribution, one that runs on Wayland, another one that runs on X11 and have them be equally important or equally supported instead of defaulting to one and neglecting the other. But then it raises at least two other questions. Maintaining both will require time and resources. And many of these things are open source. And so there is a limitation there. And secondly, defaulting to Wayland might actually shorten that transition period. It might force developers on whichever side, on Wayland side, on the application side, to work actively on the solutions to speed up that process of transition. Because if we always have an option to revert back to the equally supported X11, I don't think the progress will be as fast, just because we're not forced to. And so again, I know there are too many variables in and around Wayland and the reasons for introducing it or on the other side, the people who are heavily against it. I might not be aware of all possible issues and considerations that go into this. And so I can always speak only about things that I'm more or less familiar with. And those are my thoughts. So leave your thoughts in the comments. Let's keep this conversation going. Because I think that the transition to Wayland is, I would say, an irreversible process. I think it's just not possible for us anymore to go back to X11. And the Linux community and the Linux desktop will generally develop in the direction of using Wayland only as a default. And so our task right now, I think, is just to you know, accept the fact and voice the concerns, voice the issues that we encounter share them, keep communicating, and hopefully the problems that we have right now will be solved sooner than later. I really hope that it wouldn't take us another 75 years to get to a really smooth working solution such as Wayland. And as I briefly touched on the remote access issue specifically, you might want to check out the next video that will pop up here somewhere um, if you're interested in what kind of third-party applications can you use to uh, be able to use remote access on Linux and specifically on Wayland. See you.